and enticing that makes them, when the door opens, they say, could we have a drink right now? Could we have a cup of coffee? I'm very interested in that, you know? My uh, uncle is a genius in this, and he recently passed away, and we have all this money, and we're looking for a, a way to spread it out, and, and I'm an angel investor, and I, we, we were just talking yesterday that we are very interested in the ecosystem, and yet it's not being done correctly. Uh, and, and why can't we put DNA and all the genomics together with economic impact or environmental impact? You know, why don't we put those two things together, right? So you never know who you're going to get off the, the floor with. So keep, keep, uh, keep this in mind. We're, we're starting very thin, but it's building on stories and pieces where you can go deeper, you can change things, you can shape. A couple other things that have to happen in the pre-seed stage. So you have some volunteers now. That's wonderful. Uh, you know, you're probably going to survive for a while with volunteers, and they may, may not get paid. They're happy not to get paid for a certain amount of time, for a cup of coffee. But at some point during this transition, you're going to have to figure out how to build out an organization of people that are dedicated some way and, in general, compensated in some way. They're going to have equity or they're going to have a promise you'll pay them someday, or you actually have to start paying them and finding out how is, your, how is your organization really wired? You have to, you have to work through the, the legal incorporation that, yes, we are now a company, you know. We, you have to legally incorporate, some, incorporate someday. You need to, to license your technology someday. If, if you haven't already, and I don't know where you have, where you are in that process, with, uh, the Idea Champions, how, how many of you have, everyone based on a patent, correct? Do you have a patent? A week? N not patented yet. Okay. Rudolph, yes? Okay. No, okay. So, some, so you, you have some very important conversations to have here as well. And also with technology transfer in your universities. At some point, uh, an important checkbox that you're going to have to talk about is what does this entity get? You know, what does it get from the university and the research side? And this will launch into a lot of also conversations and memorandums of understanding and uh, documents that really explain what is transferring out of the university into here and what about the new stuff that comes along. So those will be, those will be great uh, conversations to have. Another thing you need to do is you need to think about the road, the, the long road in public. Okay, so where, when you start going out in the world and traveling around to, to uh, tell people about your fantastic idea and be rejected and ask for funding and help and have, most people say, no, thank you. Uh, I, I'm not interested. So as you go out on that, that long road and you tour around, you are now entering another transition point that's quite interesting. You're now becoming a public company. Not in the sense that you're a publicly traded and publicly owned company, but that your story now has to resonate with people who are busy, people that don't know the world has a problem, they don't know you maybe can help them, or that they need your help, that have all kinds of people asking them for money, and they get lots of good ideas, so they, they, they want to know why yours is better. And so now your image is going to become important, right? So the, the way you crisp this up, a, a website, what you look like online is an important point at some point. When do you need that website? What does it look like? You know, it probably will show that you're not too big right away. That may or may not be good. Uh, any kind of hard copy, are you going to have a... A brochure, br br uh, a brochure. I'm trying to speak French. Uh, bruschetta, please. Are you going to serve bruschetta when you talk to these people? Uh, a brochure, you know, a hard a PDF file you're mailing to people. When they open that up, what does it look like? Because they don't know about any of this. They're just going to know, wow, that, that, that doesn't look very professional. How many random emails do you all open up, right? Even when you know people. You, you may not spend the time with certain things. So your image all of a sudden starts becoming important. Back over here, I like to think of it as private in that you're trying to be very objective. 
Now, that doesn't mean you're trying to be not objective here and you're not going to lie and be unethical. But over here, you're really, you're really spending your own time, your own money. So it's worth it to really decide what's going on and, and take a very objective look. And if there's going to be problems and challenges that you're going to hit down here, find out about them now. Why wait till you're way down here to find out about all those challenges? Because sometimes you can do something about them that make them less of a, of a challenge. I'd like to uh, close by drawing a few other important pictures here. So the first one is, let's see, I'm going to put it right up in here. The first one is, uh, this, is a, this is a retro. This is a retro sketch if you haven't figured that out. Cash registers don't look like that. Even car engines don't look like that anymore. So likewise, this, this is a 1950, this is a 1957 uh, personal assistant, PDA. Anyone know what that is? Yeah, this is an, this is an iPhone, 1957 iPhone right here. Specifically, the contacts uh, application. Any, anyone know what that, that device is called? Yeah, a Rolodex. I'll try to tune that up a little bit. I don't think there was room for the business cards to flip around through there. But, you know, it's a, it's a, it really shines light right out of it. It's, it's incredibly important. And why, why, is, why is a Rolodex so important? You could say LinkedIn if you want. It's 1957 LinkedIn, but I, I bet you LinkedIn's still having trouble keeping up with the analog version, although it, it, it's a helpful tool. What am I trying to get at here? What am I trying to point out? Why is a Rolodex so critical to these idea champions, early stage companies? Networking. Yeah, the networking. And trying to get to these critical people here trying to get to these critical people here. And just bumping into someone you know is not as good as bumping into someone who's actually the right person to help you in whatever way, little piece of the puzzle you're, you're, you're wanting that help. And your Rolodex is way bigger, as LinkedIn is helping to show. You're not very far removed from people probably that might be the perfect people to help you. So when you say, you know, I don't, I don't know of anyone who really needs this. I don't know the right person in a big company that might do a, a study with us or be an industry sponsor. But maybe uh, I, I just met, met uh, Jean-Marc and uh, he knows someone, he, uh, industry connection. So maybe he knows someone who knows the right person for that industry connection. So find out through your Rolodex who you know that knows someone that knows someone is very powerful. And so our Rolodexes are a lot bigger than, than uh, we think. So make sure you start utilizing them. Okay, another piece of the puzzle that is critically important is the, the football. The football. Now, the football is 100% just an analogy for the pre-seed workshop. And if you go out and ask startup companies, what's your football, they'll have no clue what you're talking about. Unless they're a pre-seed workshop alum, and then they'll say, oh, you must have been to the pre-seed workshop. And you'll say, yes, I was. So it's just an analogy, but it's a very critical one, and we know very, very well with science, especially with these scalable, business, scalable businesses, that the football is very hard to figure out what the football is exactly and to get it right and it might shape quite a bit over the course of tomorrow and maybe over the next weeks, over the next months, even the first years. In fact, most startup companies, football changes from what they thought, wow, to what it actually ends up being. Now what is a football? What is a football? Well, it is your basis of your technology. You know, can you boil down, what's your core competency? What do you really know? That's you. That's what you're really good at. Your product. What product are you turning it into? It sounds really simple, but it's usually not. There's a bunch of different ways that these ideas can go forward. 
business models, renditions. Are you selling a service? Are you selling a product? Are you selling a reagent? Are you selling something that gets used over and over again? Are you selling hardware? Are you selling the whole system? Are you selling a component that improves somebody else's system? So in the first module tomorrow, we're going to really have you dig into your football. What's the basis of your technology? What is the product you're selling? And the third piece of the, of the football is if we cut it in half and looked inside, what do we see that's unique and protectable and these barriers to entry? What do you have about your football that no one else can have? So we want you to, to dig in into that one. Last picture that I want to show you is uh, a couple of pictures here. One, uh, they're, they're related concepts here. So the first one is an idea of a sieve or a, uh, a filter. And as you're thinking of an idea, as you're thinking of which idea to commercialize, you know, it's, it's really healthiest to have a whole bunch of ideas in your head and moving forward at once. A portfolio of ideas that are trying to go through this process and you think of these stages and gates that you start to filter out a little bit and you have less ideas at each, at each step along the way. So rather than thinking of one idea and it's going to be implemented one way, you, you really think of a bunch of ideas. Where Most wild guys don't have a whole bunch of chances to do this. So where should they spend their time? Where should they spend their, their money and their energy? Maybe think of a bunch of ideas. Even, even, these, even one idea, even one idea has an estimated over 1,000 pathways forward. If you think of this from a business model generation standpoint, I call it renditions chart. There's different names for ways to do it. But if the idea is really challenged to think of, of where it's going to operate, how it's going to operate, which product it's going to